When I first reviewed the TBS Tango 2, I was so tempted to declare it the best radio that you could get, especially at its $160 price point. You compare the Tango 2 to anything else out there at $160, the build quality is unbelievable. And it's got Crossfire built in, which is arguably the best control link you can get. Yes, I know. Immersion RC Ghost exists too. Set that aside. This is not the video for that. But the reason that I did not declare the Tango 2 was the best radio you could get for $160 or maybe more was that it did not support 2.4 gigahertz radios. It has only Crossfire? Are you kidding me? Oh, if you have 100% Crossfire receivers in all of your aircraft, good for you. But most of us don't. Most of us still fly FreeSky or FlySky or Spectrum every now and then. Maybe it's an a airplane that you just haven't converted to Crossfire. Maybe it's a tiny whoop that doesn't have a Crossfire receiver in it. That's the big one. But today, all of that changes because TBS has released this. This is a TBS multi-protocol module that supports FreeSky, FlySky, Spectrum, just like all those other multi-protocol modules that the Jumper and the Radio Master guys and more have been using for a while. Now you can put that right on the back of your Tango 2. Oh, by the way, there's also a module bay that you can put on the back of your Tango 2. So does that mean that this is now the best radio you can get for 160 bucks or maybe more? I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. I want to do two things in this video. One of them is introduce you to the new TBS multi-protocol module because a whole lot of people out there are going to be getting this module. I want to show you basically how it works and discuss like, could you just go out and buy an iRange X module? Could you use this module on your FreeSky X Lite? Oh, heresy, I know, putting a TBS module on a FreeSky radio. Well, we'll talk more about that in a minute. The other thing I want to do is I really feel obligated to go back and re-examine my review of the Tango 2 because there were a few things that I thought would be deal breakers for some people about the Tango 2. And at least one of those big deal breakers is now gone. Let's start by just looking at the module and the module bay. And the first thing you're going to see is that I have added this module bay to the back of my Tango 2. I have a tutorial recorded and edited, and it will be coming out in the next uh, few days or weeks, less than, less than weeks. It'll be coming out on my channel soon. It may already be out. If it is already out, look in the video description. I'll add a link to it when it comes out. And if not, then make sure you're subscribed and hit the notification bell so that you're the first to see it when I do finally release it. Suffice it to say that you're going to need this if you're going to use this. Okay, so it plugs in, no problem. And you are also going to need to update firmware on your Tango 2 in order to support it. And again, I have a video showing how to do that already recorded, already edited, and it'll be coming out not too long from now. Again, get subscribed, and then I'll put a link in the video description if you're watching this later and it's already out. To make the multi-protocol module work, I'm just gonna press the menu key one time. Hold on, I usually wanna show you the button presses and scroll wheels, but the screen on this thing is pretty freaking small. So I'm gonna zoom in with the camera and you'll just have to follow along with the buttons. I think you can handle it. So I'm gonna hit the page key one time to go to model setup, and then I'm gonna roll the jog wheel to the right, it'll go up through the top of the menu and around to the bottom, and that's the quickest way to get to here, the external RF mode. Now, external RF mode is currently set to off, and by the way, if you don't see external RF, it's because you didn't update the firmware on your Tango 2. The Tango 2 didn't used to have an external module base, so there wasn't, this wasn't in earlier firmwares. Um, so, external RF is set to off, I'm going to click that one time and I'm going to change that with the jog wheel from off to multi, multi protocol. And when I do that, I'll get another option here on the right. So the multi protocol module supports a ton of different receiver types. The most basic ones are FreeSky, FlySky, 
Spectrum, but also a whole bunch of other bind and fly radios that I wouldn't even be able to name all of them. But if you go to the multi protocol module, uh, it's an open source uh, project, so they have a GitHub repo and uh, they could talk about it all over there. Um, there's a ton of these, what they call sub protocols here. And notice that we've got mode multi type fly sky and subtype standard. So in order to bind, you're going to need to set the correct type and subtype. And I want to just take you through a couple of them because they could be a little misleading sometimes. So if we select FreeSky protocol here and go down to subtype, the first one we see is D16, which is just FreeSky D16, but it's not quite that simple because FreeSky uh, have divided their protocols between firmware version 2.0 and newer and pre 2.0. This subtype D16 type FreeSky is for the older pre 2.0 firmwares. If you're trying to bind to a 2.0 or 2.1 firmware, I'll show you how to do that in a minute. We've also got the subtype D8, which is just the older D8 protocol. We've got subtype D16 8 channel. Uh, D16 has 16 channels total, but a lot of people run it in eight channel mode because it cuts the latency in half and that this is how you do that. We've also got the subtype LBT. If you're in EU and if your firmware has the EU firmware on it, this is what you'll need to do to bind to that. And LBT 8 channel, which is the eight channel version of that same thing. Now, if you've got a FreeSky receiver with the newer ACCSD 2.0 or 2.1 protocol on it, you will need to choose the FreeSky X2 protocol instead of the FreeSky protocol. After that, everything is the same. I'm showing this to you on my Radio Master T16 because it doesn't actually show up in the list on the Tango. And I'm going to guess that's because the firmware on this has not yet been updated to the absolute latest. Um, I'm sure that's going to be fixed very soon. Uh, I know that it's supported in the open in the module firmware, and I presume it'll be trivial for. I know it's supported in OpenTX, so it should be trivial for them to add support for that. But it doesn't appear to be there at this time. Before we move on from FreeSky, I should also let you know that the multi protocol module has the ability to clone the receiver ID from another FreeSky radio that you've got. So if you have a FreeSky radio now and you've got a whole bunch of FreeSky receivers bound to it, you don't have to rebind them all to this guy. You can just get make this guy learn the receiver ID of your other one and then the bind will just copy over. I have a whole tutorial about how to do that and I'll put a link to that also down in the video description. Now, if you have FlySky receivers, you would naturally assume that the protocol to select would be FlySky, but it wouldn't because that is actually a very old FlySky protocol that is not used anymore. What you actually want if you want to bind a FlySky receiver is the protocol FSky2A. And notice that when you do that, you'll be able to choose the subtype and that will determine whether the receiver outputs IBUS or SBUS. There we go. And it can also, depending on your receiver type, output PWM or PPM, although that shouldn't matter because we should just be using a digital receiver anyway, so PWM or PPM shouldn't matter. If you're going to bind more than one FlySky model to this radio, you do need to be aware of a complication. Uh, FlySky, like many other protocols, supports model match. And the purpose of model match is to prevent you from accidentally trying to fly the wrong model, the wrong aircraft with the wrong model loaded in the radio. So let's say you've got one big fixed wing and one racing drone and you bind them both as free sky receivers. Well, let's say you accidentally go to fly the racing drone, but you've got the airplane model loaded in the radio and the controls don't work right and maybe something bad happens. With model match, you can assign each receiver a unique model number. That model number is stored in the model in the radio and then the radio will only bind to the receiver if the correct model is loaded. Now, you may have never encountered this before because with FreeSky, well, with Crossfire, there didn't even used to be model match, although it has been added to Crossfire and Crossfire now supports model match. Yay. Um, with FreeSky, you can just assign all your receivers the same model number. And essentially, the model match function won't work, but everything, you'll still be able to bind all the receivers. They'll just all have the same model number. With FlySky, you cannot assign more than one receiver to the same model match number. So if I bind one FlySky quad using receiver number zero, and then I go and I bind another FlySky quad 
with receiver number zero, the first bind will be lost. And some people who don't know this are, they're like, well, why do I always have to rebind all of my quads? Why is it losing bind? So if you have multiple FreeSky models, you're going to need to create a different model in the radio for each one and assign a different model number to each, uh, sorry, FlySky, I said FreeSky models. If you have multiple FlySky models, you need to assign a different model match number to each FlySky receiver that you bind. With FreeSky, you don't have to do that, but you can. With Crossfire, you don't have to do that, but you can. Clear as mud. Finally, if you're binding to a Spectrum receiver, you're gonna need to choose DSM as your protocol, and your subtype will either be 22 milliseconds or 11 milliseconds, depending on which your receiver supports. Obviously, 11 milliseconds is better. It's lower latency and faster, but not all receivers support it. Or maybe they do. I'm not sure how old 22 milliseconds really is these days. I don't do a lot with Spectrum. I think that's pretty much all you need to know to get started using the multi-protocol module. Once you have bound the model, then you just work with it like any other model in any OpenTX radio. Oh, there, how do you bind it? Well, I mean, it should be pretty obvious, but you highlight bind and it goes into bind mode and you bind it. Now, unlike most TBS products, the multi-protocol module is not updated using TBS Agent X. In fact, if you plug it in, TBS Agent X won't even recognize that it exists. I have a video about how to update the firmware on the multi-protocol module, and you're going to do that by downloading the firmware from this website. But one thing that is not in that video is which like settings to choose, because this module didn't exist yet. So you're going to need to select the Radio Master TX16S internal 4-in-1 module, You'll select your channel order, which only matters if you're using bind and fly uh, quads, not if you're using normal flight controllers. You can set any channel order you want if you're using normal flight controllers. And that's it. You're then going to download this bin file and flash it to the multi-protocol module using the instructions in the video linked in the video description. Well, we couldn't review a new module without doing my now patented range test. So in the interest of science, I'm gonna leave the Tango 2 sitting right here with the antenna sticking straight up in the air. And I'm gonna go that -er way. Then I'll just watch the receiver LED and see when it goes from green to red. So it's going back and forth between green and red, so I think we're going to call it here. In my completely unscientific, totally worthless uh, <laughs> for receiver range testing, it went about as far as the others, as far as the farther ones of the others. This is a little towards the far end, as opposed to like that tree back there is more like the near end of where you typically see a fail safe. This one hung in a little further, but it didn't get like all the way to the end of the road, which would have been super impressive. So um, the purpose of this testing is not to like, it's, I know there's like trees in the way and all that nonsense, but the point is just to kind of weed out any radically unusual results. And this one is in line with the other stuff I've tested. Good enough for me. So that brings us to the end of the video and back to the question that I proposed at the beginning of this video, should you get this radio? And I think that the inclusion of the 2.4 gigahertz multi-protocol module makes the answer to that question yes for more people than ever before. No longer does the Tango 2, which is an excellent quality radio, force you to use 100% Crossfire receivers in every single aircraft that you own. You have the option now and more options than ever before. Spectrum, FlySky, FreeSky, and more. So what are the stumbling blocks then that would sort of steer you away from it? The screen is really freaking small. Um, it's usable, but it's not a pleasant experience compared to something like this. 
And there are people out there who say, whatever, who cares? You only set your radio up once and then you're done. And there's some truth to that. So you just decide how strongly you feel. Um, the form factor, this is the best, most ergonomic gamepad style radio I have ever used. I have used this for 45 minutes or an hour on the simulator, never putting it down. When you fly, you always put the radio down, take a break, change a pack. I held it in my hands for that long. And at the end of like an hour of continuous use, I did start to kind of feel a little cramped in my hands. I've never been a big fan of gamepad style radios, but a lot of people are. And if you are, I feel like this one has the best ergonomics of any of them. On the other hand, some people are gonna do better with a radio like this. By the way, this is the upgraded version of the RadioMaster TX16S, the TX16 Max. And I think this may be the other contender. For, between these two radios, I think almost... Oh, I shouldn't overstate it. But I'm going to be making another video about this and talking about why maybe this would be the one that you would pick instead of, well, instead of this one. The other thing I can think of is that the... Uh, knobs and switches there's only one two three four and five six total switches and if you go well who needs more than that great and if you go wow well, uh, that's not enough for me then you know what you need to do other than that this is an amazing radio uh the ergonomics on this radio are the best of any gamepad controller radio that I've ever used. I've used this for like an hour at a time on the simulator, not putting it down, just flying it. And at the end of like an hour, eventually my hands did kind of start to cramp up a little bit, but I usually just completely hate and can't fly with gamepad style radios at all. So the fact that I could go for an hour on this one really speaks to its ergonomics. Um, the build quality, I, I mean, I feel like this is probably the best built $160 radio out there. And I've been inside it. There have been a few little issues like the battery coming disconnected on the inside and TBS fixed that by changing the orientation of the battery plug. But overall, this is a really, really solidly built radio. Great gimbals. These are fantastic gimbals. Um, maybe a little small for some people, but if you're using a gamepad style radio, it's really what you need. Crossfire built in up to 500 milliwatts. If you have the V3 main board, which if you buy it today, that's what you'll get. Yeah, pretty freaking amazing. If you decide that this is the radio for you, there are links in the video description. They are affiliate links. If you make any purchase after you click that link, I get a small commission and it's one of the, an easy way for you to support the channel is to just click that affiliate link, any affiliate link for any store before you shop at that store and I'll get a commission and uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, happy flying, you guys. What are you doing in here? The least you could do is subscribe or join my Patreon or like just here's another video I picked out for you. Jeez.